Hello and welcome to our service of worship, prayer and reflection for the second Sunday in Lent. My name is Anne and it is my privilege to be one of the ministers to the churches in and around Kirby Lonsdale. In our reading today from Mark's Gospel, we hear Jesus begin to try to explain to his disciples why he had been sent to dwell among us and what he had been sent to do and also how he expected his followers to respond. On the face of it, it was not a rosy future and his disciples struggled to accept it. As we continue our journey through Lent, I wonder how you act and react when you know there are difficult things ahead. We would all prefer the way ahead to be smooth and trouble free, or would we? I think of the hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer with its line, not forever in green pastures would we idly rest and stay, but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way. And yes, some of us like a challenge and are bored when life does not offer them. That's all well and good when the outcome has a chance of being positive. But how do we act when we know that there is trouble and pain ahead? I can be tempted to be the ostrich and put my head in the sand, but that's not helpful in the long term. It is better to face up to what is ahead, so we can prepare accordingly. But it is also important not to focus too much on the negative that takes away the joy from the moment. But it is important to look far enough ahead beyond the pain. I think Peter might have stopped listening after he heard Jesus use the words suffering, rejection and death and missed the ultimate triumph Jesus was pointing to. But I hope you have only just begun to listen. So let's continue with our reading from Mark's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8. Then Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Thanks be to God. The sign language for Christ is, you may know, the marks of the nails, you know, because the cross is right at the heart of Christianity. Um, and we've got the benefit of 2,000 years of, of church tradition, of libraries full of books about the cross, great works of art, great pieces of music that help us sing about the wondrous cross. Um, and see in it you know, glory, good news, love divine. Peter had none of that. 
And in that passage, we hear his reaction to Jesus talking about his death. Mark doesn't tell us the reaction of the other disciples in the crowd uh, when Jesus said to them, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. I think the impact and the implications of what Jesus said must have struck them in a way that I don't think we really feel 2,000 years on. The cross was designed by the Romans to be this most brutal way of torturing and killing someone. Um, And it was reserved for non-persons, for prisoners, uh, for slaves, and especially for revolutionaries. For those who didn't toe the line and it was a t- deterrent it was the way they could say you know unless you follow our way this is what's going to happen to you take up your cross said jesus i think it's difficult to imagine a more shocking statement coming from him his lips than you know take up your cross and yet it's right at the heart of christianity we believe in a god who took up his cross. I remember Stephen Fry uh, once being asked what he would say if he ever met God, what he would say, uh, say to him. And this is what Stephen Fry replied. He said, I think I'd say, bone cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault. It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world that is so full of injustice and pain? The question of suffering. Why did God create this world that we experience with its sorrows as well as its joys? And it's not a new question. What Stephen Fry was saying wasn't radical or new. I think from the moment that someone spoke about God's steadfast love and faithfulness, there would have been people who said, well, then why does God allow that? Why did God allow this to happen to me? Why does God ignore my pleadings And Christianity doesn't give any neat packaged answer. Instead, it says, take up your cross. It points us to the cross. It points us to God taking up his cross of God who shared uh, the suffering of the world, not only created the world, but journeyed to that place of abandonment and desolation and suffering, shared its suffering shares its suffering it points us to the cross and this season of lent is both a journey to the cross but also a journey of reflecting on what it means to take up our cross to follow in the footsteps of jesus to walk that way of sacrifice of forgiveness of love of seeking to transform even the darkest places with God's presence. And so the cross is before us. Take up your cross, said Jesus. And it's a compass. It points us to God. It points us to God in the midst of pain and suffering. It points us to a way through the darkness because it points us to light a light that the darkness can't overcome. And it points us to the way of Jesus. It helps us navigate the things of today, the things of tomorrow, the encounters that we have, the people that we're with. Helps us navigate those with love, with faith and with hope. The way of Jesus. Take up your cross and follow me. Jesus
don't die. Precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son. And living your spirit till the work on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your spirit till. The work on earth is done. Loving God, thank you for the signs of new life that are appearing around us this spring. As the bulls return from death to life, let their appearance remind us of the mystery of Easter and Jesus' death and return too. Signs of life bring us hope. Wherever we tread this week, may we spot those signs. Help us carry that hope into our next meeting, conversation or moment. Amen. Honest God, thank you for the people who follow the bravery of Jesus by speaking plainly and truthfully with honesty and an openness which can be equally confronting and vital for people to hear. When we meet these wise individuals, open our ears and minds to hear what they are trying to convey. Prevent us from building up a quick defence, but try as much as is humanly possible to sit with them, listen and learn from them. By your grace and discernment, Help us pick out the important points to dwell on. Help us be brave to be this vulnerable and to have humility when we listen and share with others too. Amen. In one of the schools we work with this week, we've been thinking about self-control and minions we've decided are the people that we know that show the least self-control. But in our story today, when Peter decided to slightly confront Jesus, he probably in that moment lost a little bit of self-control. So let's pray about it. Loving God, we thank you for the moments we show self-control, even when our feelings are strong and emotions are high. Help us to continue to learn to pause, count to ten, and pray before thinking, speaking and acting, when we feel our self-control slip away. May we grow in your wisdom 
and your care. Amen. Please join me in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we've been reflecting together today, I was reminded of a song uh, written by Matt Redman. It was called, The Cross Has Said It All. And the second verse says, The cross has said it all. The cross has said it all. I never recognised your touch until I met you at the cross. We are fallen dust to dust. How could you do this for us? Son of God, shed precious blood. Who can comprehend this love? And so as we continue our journey through Lent, may you know more and more of the depths of Christ's grace. And so thank you to all our contributors today and to you for sharing <coughs> in uh, our time together. And we hope that you will have a good week. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. <clears throat> the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We'll see you next week. <laughs>